once upon a time, way back when, when I was a kid, around Halloween or on Halloween, my biggest thrill was to compete with the neighborhood kids about who could get the most trick-or-treat candy. We'd all be dressed up like ghouls and goblins or superheroes. And that was, that was it. That was Halloween. And it wasn't until about 10 years ago, my sister Amber invited me and my family to go to a Dia de los Muertos celebration at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery. And it blew my mind. I felt like I had been missing out my whole life on this cultural phenomenon that takes place around the same time as Halloween. It's actually Dias de los Muertos. It's the November 1st and November 2nd. But during this time, it's an honoring of the departed loved ones. Now, many of you know this. But here's something that I learned at that first Dia de los Muertos ceremony. There are three kinds of death. There is the death that happens when somebody actually dies, where they stop breathing, their heart stops beating. The second level of death is when there is the burial, where you lay them to rest and they're no longer physical at all anymore in this world. The third kind of death is when somebody who has passed on is forgotten. One of the reasons for Dia de los Muertos is so that the third kind of death doesn't happen to our departed beloveds or to us when it's our time to go. So in the, in the practice of Dia de los Muertos, people set out beautiful ofrendas. These are altars that have food and drinks and memorabilia that that the beloved who's on the other side would relate to. Maybe it's pictures of them, maybe it's some of their favorite food and you play some of their favorite music, you tell some stories about them. And in this way, they are immortalized. And in fact, sometimes you see these these petals, these flower petals that that go down the path from the cemetery out into the street or from the home of the people who are still living out, out down the street. And that's supposed to light the path for the departed to come in for a couple of days to spend time with us. So there's so many elements of this beautiful tradition, including La Llorona, the weeping woman who cries for her children that passed and it's just it's an opportunity for everybody to weep along with her it's an opportunity to make sacred the fact that we are always in relationship with our beloveds on the other side every day really is dia de los muertos because our loved ones are never that far away but it's believed that during this time of year the veil is particularly thin and our access to them is even greater than it might otherwise be during the rest of the year. Who's to say? I think the veil is always thin. It's a matter of our consciousness, but I think there's a power in collective belief. If a lot of people believe that it's this time of year that we can call on them, then perhaps we can do it with a little bit more ease. So for me, in the years leading up to COVID, it just seemed like every day I was receiving a phone call that another one of my beloveds was, was leaving, was departing, was transitioning. I had three pets of my, my beloved dogs, my mother-in-law, my husband's singer, singing songwriting partner, my dearest bestie Gypsy passed away. My friend, my dearest other bestie Teresa passed away. And it just seemed like people were dropping like flies. And I noticed myself every time I would get that phone call, feeling kind of punched in the gut, feeling like some betrayal had happened, feel, taking it very personally, feeling like a little bit of a part of me was being, was, was being lost. And I remembered Dia de los Muertos and I remembered how empowered I felt at that ceremony and at the 
ceremonies that I've attended and participated in and even co-facilitated in Teotihuacan. And I thought, I really need to alter my relationship with the angel of death and with this whole institution or with this whole mythology we call death. Because if we, I, if we're lucky enough to grow older, we're going to get more phone calls like that from everyone. I mean, if we're going to live to be at a ripe old age, you know, it's par for the course. And if I'm going to continue to lose my vitality as each person passes, then that's going to leave me a shell of myself. And I don't think my departed beloveds want that for me or want that for us. So after my friend Gypsy passed away, I was looking for a way to communicate with her on my own. Of course, I could pay hundreds of dollars for, you know, to have the intervention of a psychic or a medium to step in, but that's not always practical every day. And I thought, wouldn't it be amazing because I love Oracle cards. I've made a number of Oracle decks myself. I thought, I wish I had a Dia de los Muertos Oracle deck as a means by which to communicate with the people I love on the other side, because I know how powerful that can be. And I looked and looked and I didn't find anything like that. There are lots of books on Dia de los Muertos. There's even games on Dia de los Muertos, but no Oracle cards. So I called my friend Emily, who lives in the in Teotihuacan, and I asked her if she'd be open to create this deck with me, even though I really she knew way more about it and knows way more about Dia de los Muertos than I do, but I had the audacity to create the thing that I wanted. So fast forward, end of COVID, we finally created this deck. And this is actually the first Dia de los Muertos. This deck is out and it's available now. And I am so excited to bring it to you and to play with this with you. And I say play because wouldn't it be great if, and I believe if my higher self could talk, and even if the higher self of our departed loved ones could talk, they would say, play, don't be so heavy about it. This is what's so great about the de los Muertos. It blends the sorrowful and the morose with the absurd and with the joyous and with playfulness. We have the mariachis on the cover of our Dia de los Muertos Oracle deck because they symbolize this spirit more than almost any other, where it is about music and song and color and pageantry as a way to celebrate our living, our connection, our remembrances while we're alive so that we can be more embodied in our lives. So I hope you enjoy the Dia de los Muertos ceremonies that you might attend. And I hope you enjoy the Dia de los Muertos Oracle deck. I hope it gives you a way to be able to connect with your beloveds by simply calling them to mind, lighting a candle, shuffling the deck, and maybe asking a question like, hey, Gypsy, hey, Grandma, hey, Shadow, my, the name of my dog, what do you want me to know right now? Or what's it like over there? What message do you have for me? And then see what card tingles for you. And you pick that card and read it to yourself in a meditative way and notice yourself feeling strangely and mysteriously more in communion. It's believed that when we take one step toward them, they take at least 10 steps toward us. So may this season of Dia de los Muertos be a time for you where you can feel the love of your beloveds on the other side because it is here. Let's not waste it and let's allow it to make the years that we have and the moments that we have here all the more juicy and all the more filled with love in a way that honors our beloveds and then some peace and blessings.